Hey class, this is uh, Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is the video tutorial for Lab 4, which is about um, distribution and logic. Okay. So we're going to continue on from what we looked at in the video on Tuesday, but um, before we do that, I want to introduce an idea um, that's pretty powerful. And um, so we looked at distribution on curves and surfaces and one thing that um, <clears throat> is really important is that you can create curves and surfaces uh, if you have points okay so like if I um, take a series of points right I could take lines from those and I can construct curves um, if I take a series of points I can actually construct um, a surface from points so if we know how to um, put points in a certain configuration, that's really powerful. So what I want to do is show you a little bit about some methods for um, making series of points. So we have a point object which takes x, y, z coordinates and outputs a point. And we've seen how you can take something like a series <coughs> and you can plug it in for you know, x and it makes 10 points, right? So let's start there. Let's make a number slider. That controls the number we have, and then let's give this some kind of a distance. And then we control the spacing. Okay, so we have that. We have that piece of it. And then the next piece that I'm going to do, though, is, is to make it a little bit more interesting. I really, I want to, I want to make this um, an interesting um, sort of curve. And actually, just go ahead and do <coughs> take a curve object, and we plug those points in. This is actually one curve, but it's made out of all these points. Okay. What I want to do though is I want to um, change the position of the points in another axis. So I have a row of them, and then I want to I want to disturb them in the z axis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a graph mapper, and then we're going to use our same structure. So take a range component, and we're going to have the same number of things in the range component but we need to make sure to subtract 1. Thanks, we got that. Play it in. Just put in something. That is A or something. <clears throat> and, you know, if you plug that in for value, like for Z, you know, something's starting to happen. But there's not really enough um, of an effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by some number. And in fact, I'm going to make this probably a bigger number. Plug that in. Z. There we go. <clears throat> and so what we're doing is, you know, we're changing the coordinates of these points in the x and the z and then the curve kind of interpolates them, and you get you pretty much get what you see uh, in the graph mapper. You can see though now it's not not quite adjusting to it. You can help that by adding more points. Let me change your resolution a little bit. The more points you have, the tighter that's going to be. Like it's going, it's going to have more resolution. It's going to have more detail. And remember, we're not really, we don't really care too much about the points in this case, so much as we care about the curve that they generate, because that curve is going to be what we're going to, you know, uh, what we're going to turn into to different things, okay? So your first question I'm going to ask you, though, is, uh, so I made this curve, and it's you know, vertical. How would I make this curve so that it lies flat? Okay, and um, to illustrate what I mean, I'm going to open another example here and show you what I want. So, basically, how 
how would you do something like How would you do something uh, like this? Okay, that's what you want. So, how do you adjust what I gave you so that you would get that kind of configuration? Okay, and that's going to be really useful for us because then we can um, make different forms of it. Okay, so that's a that's kind of just a quick one, just a quick one. But you know, if you have the graph mapper, you know, you can play with that as well and. You know, you can play the distance of it, you know, play with the modulation. So there's some really interesting things that can happen that can give you curves. And they're really smooth, they're mathematically generated, so that's really nice. Um, okay, let's look at something else. Once you have that piece figured out, the next thing that I want you to do is how do you create a collection of these curves um, going, you know, up? Basically, what's a what's a, what's an easy way to do this uh, without using the move transform? How do you get a collection that looks like this? Just by inputting point data, okay, into I mean just by inputting numbers into the point component, okay. How would you get something that looks like this? Okay. You're not using the move component. Okay. And once you have that piece figured out, you have this structure here that is plugged in somewhere into your structure. And what I want you to do is to duplicate this and copy paste it, you know, okay. And what you can do is, you can plug in these values. Remember, this is a multiplier. It's going to multiply this. And you plug this structure in instead of this multiplier. OK? Uh, what you're going to do instead of that is you're going to graft this. And then it's going to give you an interesting effect. Okay, so can you explain what's going on here with these points? Okay, so with the numbers that I'm putting in, how is it producing this effect? And a hint I'll give you is that this is very similar to the homework question that I asked with the two graph mappers. Okay, only again we're grafting these numbers on here. And once you have something like that, I'm just going to move this over here. You can take these curves that we created from the points, and you could loft them together. Go ahead and flatten these, and then loft them. And then actually gives you a surface like, based on those points. Okay, so you, we need to flatten the structure because it was, you know, in these like in these, it was in a different data structure. So we flatten this, and we get a loft. Okay, so just by changing the positions of these points, we can generate curves, and then we can generate lofts. We can also take uh, points and plug them in to generate um, a surface. If you go in to freeform, there's a, actually there's surface from points, I think. I can't remember where it's located. Yeah, surface from points. Okay. And that works. But I can't show you the points because that's one of the questions I'm asking you. Okay. So experiment with this a little bit. Play with those graph mappers. See what kinds of interesting mathematical services that you can come up with. You know, and then once you have a surface, you can you can do that you can do that surface like divide structure that I showed you on Tuesday, or you could propagate something to that surface. Okay, so there's a lot of interesting possibilities um, 
or you could just use these as your distribution points because you already created them. Okay, but you know it's, it's really hard to draw these kinds of services sometimes. And actually, what we want, you know, computationally, you know, the kind of aesthetic is that mathematical aesthetic. And so, generating you know the points, uh, the like numbers mathematically gives us these mathematical points, which gives us mathematical curves, and gives us mathematical services. Okay, so experiment with that. And uh, if you have any questions about this, let us know.